Okay, welcome to part three. As per the plan, I gloved up to protect my drying skin from the low humidity here. And off camera, I did take the prop hub off here, the nut. And because I was looking at this one screw, those of you that have watched from the very beginning uh, know that in my initial inspection, and JP had told me this, that there's a ball in broken off in one of these screw heads. If anybody has any ideas on how to get that out, please let me know. Uh, my last idea, like I said, I've had this happen before to me. My last idea that I just tried was get like a, a small brad, nail, a brad, and try to get in there in one of the corners and give it a wrap and maybe hopefully that'll pop it out because there's enough of a friction fit in there. I can sit there and turn it, and ro or not turn it, but it'll rotate back and forth, you know, on the flats, but there's enough of a grip in there that you can't just pull it out with a magnet. That's just not gonna happen, I've tried that. So I thought maybe if I could get something thin enough in there on one of the corners and just give it a wrap at the right angle that it might pop out, but that didn't happen. The brads were too, too uh, flimsy material and they just bent. So, one thing I saw that I didn't remove yet that I don't want to lose is this washer here. So we're going to continue on with now JP said he, he thinks there's something wrong with cylinder one. Unfortunately, cylinder one's probably going to be the last one I get to um, just because it's on the bottom. So those, I don't, I'm probably going to make one video and try to keep them short, one video per cylinder. Um, just to try to keep things a little bit shorter and I'm primarily making these videos for JP's benefit as opposed to anybody else's but I don't know how many videos I'm gonna make total on this uh, I don't really have a time limit to finish this project so it could be a kind of a longer duration thing um, so if I'm doing one cylinder per video and it bores you, then just jump ahead to wherever the section that sort of interests you. Because I'm really doing this for JP's purpose and I'll share it with you, but I'm not, this is not necessarily designed to be entertainment for you. This is a serious, serious job. And my focus has got to be on doing this job. So this all looks good. I don't see anything, any issues here. And I was gonna start taking the cylinder off instead of taking it off. I'm gonna start from top down and just gradually take pieces off. Um, so it looks like, uh, where's my... a different magnet that's downstairs in the garage right now. Push rod extraction. A lot of oil suction keeping that push rod in there. Well, it'll come out. Next piece of the puzzle is this guy here. And there's probably two more head screws down here.
not sure I'm really liking these particular gloves. I did break these head, heads free first before I put it on camera. I just get a little, I get a little nervous about you having having the need to use the L wrenches just because of the fitment. The ground wrenches are so much better, and I don't. I guess I could put pliers on it, but it's just I don't like the way that feels. Trying to use those ground, and I, I tried with just one hand, and it was these are really tight. So I mean, this engine has never been disassembled before. I'm absolutely certain of that. Can tell by the way the fasteners are snapping free. Just throw those out there real quick and make sure they're all the same length. Not like it matters, I pretty much can figure out where all these screws go. Okay, front screws are shorter. Mental note for me, audio note for me, top screws are shorter. One thing I didn't bring out with me is a bunch of paper towels. Okay, so push rod, that push rod's out. O-rings, push rod, O-rings stayed in there. Here's the reveal on this head. This is where I could use some of those. Well, those springs feel really nice. This is probably only going to require maybe just a little brushing clean. I don't know how much runtime is on this engine, but it doesn't look like there's a whole heck of a lot. I can't rotate that cylinder, so. Hmm, that was where I need to think here. Do I want to take this off or do I want to just leave it like this right now? If I take it off then I'm going to have a piston flopping all around and a, or a connecting rod. I think I'm going to take all the heads off to this same point. First, let me go and grab some paper towels. Okay, so this video is going to be cylinders. Uh, let's see here, four, three, and four, because I'm going to go over to this one. Get my container for three. Cylinder heads three and four being removed. Man, these gloves make my hands hot as hell. It's a warm day today. This is probably, I think I said this a couple of videos ago, this is probably the last warm day of the year, but yesterday was actually, this is. No, uh, October 30th, I think. And yesterday was 80 degrees. <clears throat> Today it's almost 70 degrees. So it's pretty warm in the apartment, plus it's just... Warm. I'll go. I've got some other gloves that I wear when I'm working on a motorcycle or other things outside that are a lot thicker. 
They're, I think they're the nine mil density. And uh, man, they're they're durable as all get out. Very durable. I have to go to take them off, and my the glove is just full of sweat. I think the last time or the first first last time I worked on a four cylinder engine like this, the 320 I had, I think I uh, had like foam blocks or something that I kind of used to support it. Again, I had already cracked free these screws here. I don't know. It's like these rubber gloves are protecting my skin, but. I'm not getting a whole lot of... They're slipping. There we go. Wipe the oil off a little bit. Didn't I? Lots of oil in this. Lots of lubrication in this engine. That's a good thing. I'm going to end the video, this video, after this head, and the next video will be the last two heads, tops of the heads anyway, the heads, yes, it'll be the heads, because the other parts, the cylinder or the sleeve, so this is just four and three head removal. The room yawn. Looks about the same as the other one. A little bit of carbon on the top of the piston. I don't know if. The beautiful thing about this is I don't think that this engine is going to require ultrasonic cleaning at all. I think I can probably clean all of the engine parts of this by hand easily enough with just a soft tooth toothbrush. So anyway, that is cylinders three and four, the head, head, not cylinders, heads three and four removed.